So now all we've got to do is plant the X4, and we've just completed the first mission of the game entirely in one turn. Ah. Oh. Perfect. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we're playing XCOM 2. I know, it's a turn-based strategy game which is all about defeating aliens and saving humanity. Doesn't that just sound fantastic and heroic? And so naturally, I've got to give it a try and be, you know, fantastically heroic, charismatic, beautiful, and oh my goodness, so sexy. Oh wait, no, I'm not meant to compliment myself this much, am I? I'm too powerful. The more compliments I receive, the more power I have. And seeing as all of you love the last video so much, oh my goodness, the exploit for this video, it's certainly very powerful indeed. As we all know, XCOM 2 is a perfectly balanced game. It has an absolutely beautiful difficulty curve where you'll start out the game facing chump enemies and slowly get drip fed in more and more complicated enemies right up to the point where you're just facing off against massive behemoth monsters you have no chance of winning against. It's fantastic. But what if there was a way to make the game, you know, just a smidge easier? make it so that this game can be done entirely within one turn. Suddenly the missions are no longer taking half an hour and they're a grueling slog between you and an enemy. No, no, no. Instead, we're going to be finishing every single mission in the first turn. I know, it's fantastic. I've given this exploit a couple of goes and it has some hilarious results for the sole reason that the statistics of the game become completely and utterly balked. Anyway, enough of my fantastic explanation. Let's dive into this glorious video. So if you you sat back, you relaxed, you have a nice warm cup of tea, and hey, if you're even a truly majestic person and you've chosen to give this video a like, then hats off to you and let us begin. So we're going to naturally start a brand new new game of XCOM, and you know what we're going to do? Oh my goodness, we're going to go up to legend difficulty, ladies and gentlemen. A longer game with no margin for error. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I only have a couple of hours in this game, but I am going to defeat this game on the hardest difficulty. We're not going to start with Iron Man. You can do this exploit with Iron Man, but what's the point? Anyway, the premise of this game is pretty simple. We are effectively a resistance movement and, oh, we have our first mission. We're in the central zone of Beijing. Simply, we just have to sabotage an advent monument. Advent of the evil aliens, by the way. Uh, also, something that I will give you a quick tip on when it comes to this game. The load times are very long, and for some reason, I don't know why, but the developers made it so that if you want to speed up a load, simply press the caps key. No one knows why this works or why it's a feature, but you know, in the wise words of Todd Howard, it just works that way. Right, welcome to XCOM. Over there we have our monument, which is where we're going to need to plant our explosive device, and because I've done a mission very similar to this before, I know that there are aliens probably around about here. Now immediately what we want to do is find someone who is going to be our run chump. The designated role of run chumping is very important. And you know what, I think we're going to give it to Heinrich Wagner over here. He looks perfect. Perfect. So, what we're going to do is basically just leave Heinrich over here and save him for a rainy day. What we're going to do with all of our other dudes is we're simply going to run them as far as we can into the level. Now, normally this is a terrible idea. You would not recommend this at all, for the sole reason that we're going to get spotted by a bunch of aliens. Look, here's a huge quantity of aliens. Now, we're going to be fighting these aliens, of course, but in order to do that, we need to get nice and close. Now, a normal player would not execute this ballsy strategy of just running straight at them, because the aliens will shoot back on their turn and will be dead. But allow me to propose this fantastic idea. What if the aliens didn't get a turn? I know, it's crazy, it's wild, but beyond getting triggered like that so that they can move about, these aliens aren't actually going to be allowed to do anything. So I'm just going to move all of my dudes around so that they're standing perfectly next to each and every one of the aliens. And now all of our people are in position, it's up to Heinrich Wagner to do the very important role of destroying reality and time. Now, this might sound like a bit of a complicated task for good old Heinrich here, but trust me, he is absolutely ready for it. So what's going to happen is we're effectively going to freeze the entire world in place, excluding our glorious troopers. So what you do is simply move Heinrich up to the end of his blue area, and then he gets a second part of his turn where he can advance up to the yellow space. So that's exactly what Heinrich's going to do. So we'll send him into the yellow space, but whilst he's doing that, press escape twice 
twice and drop down a save file of the game. Then what you want to do is simply back out to the main menu. I know, this is very strange gameplay isn't it? And then load into the game once more. Now when we load back into the game, the game goes, whoa, where have you been? What's just happened? And it's teleported Heinrich all the way over here. But for some reason, our turn hasn't ended. No, our turn has actually just started again. As you can see, all of our characters have all of their time back effectively. They can make all of their actions. So good old Dominic here. So he can just shoot point blank this alien in the head for 85%. Chance to hit. Oh, and he does it. He doesn't kill them, but you know, nice try. We'll leave Heinrich once again for last. But this makes fighting the aliens exceedingly easy because we can just run up behind them and shoot them in the back of the head. Come on. Oh, okay. Right. How? How, game? Oh my god. I'm sorry, but no. XCOM, no, that's not how this works. He is there. Your gun is inside of his gun. It takes more effort to not shoot him than it does to shoot him. Okay, Isabella 100% has to be a traitor to the human cause. That is the only explanation I can find right now. My goodness. Right, let's just run up behind more of the aliens and shoot them. Come on. Oh my god again! Oh, for how? It's like, oh look, there's an alien. Allow me to shoot at his feet. Oh no, he moved his foot out of the way last minute. Oh, for goodness sake, AI. Right, once again, it's up to Heinrich Wagner to balk the laws of time and physics again. So, you want to move him to the edge of the blue circle, and then once again to the end of the yellow circle. Then drop down your save, exit out to the main menu, and load back in. Now, once you've done this a couple of times, you don't actually need to repeat the process because the AI will remain completely balked. I think if you do this about five or six times, you'll notice the load times into the levels get exceedingly more and more. It's this load time here, which it really struggles with. Once that reaches about uh, 20 or so seconds, then you will never need to actually do this process again, provided you don't close down and reopen XCOM entirely. It basically stops the AI from ever being able to have a turn ever again for all of the missions of the game. Anyway, let's shoot this guy in the head. This time he's in front of you, please, for goodness sake. Oh, thank God you did. Of course you did a low damage roll though, of course, yeah. We're not actually allowed to have you kill people, are we? Oh my good, oh fuck. I swear on harder difficulties, uh, it, it, they make it more than 85%. There's no way, there is no way. Oh my, oh thank God you did it. Where you were pointing the gun, that was terrifying. But we've had three 85% misses. How? Just a how game. Now over here, this is actually where these enemies spawn in. So they haven't actually had any time to move about because they just start over here. So naturally what we're going to do is just run up behind them and then once again break the laws of times and physics by just running over here to the pigeon. Now some would say that this kind of breaks the laws of times and physics but um it's actually you know perfectly balanced as all things should be. If anything this is the way the developers probably wanted us to play the game. It kind of makes sense in the canon of the universe that the humans may or may not have access to time travel. Right shoot him in the head. Thank god. Okay body works too. Now because this guy's in such a great position we're actually going to use someone else to do all the time manipulation this turn so we're gonna have Heinrich over here just shoot this alien dude in the head or not he can just shoot the pole behind him thanks Heinrich what a great 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 aim <sighs> Heinrich, you are the traitor of humanity. So yes, if you've ever struggled with the fantastic game of XCOM, then uh, this is the solution for you. And the thing is, I absolutely love XCOM as a series. It's got so many fantastic games under its belt. And by that I mean XCOM, uh, and, and that's about it. XCOM 2 is really quite good as well, but X, the original XCOM, now that is a very, very good game. If you have any fond memories of that game, give me a shout. I absolutely loved it. 11 out of 10. Could have been game of the year. Now, a new game kind of like XCOM has come out. It's called Phoenix Point. It was made by the developers of the original XCOM, so it does hold true to the original XCOM experience, but it is effectively an XCOM developer's take on all of the improvements made in XCOM 2. So it's a pretty fun game. However, Phoenix Point has a bunch of issues with it at the moment, including one of my favorite cheesy exploits, which is in the VIP capture mission you can just simply get a vehicle drive it across the map in one turn pick up the vip and drive it all the way back across the map and nothing can kill you nothing can stop you and you've just won a mission almost instantaneously which is effectively what we're doing here in the eyes of the aliens they haven't even had their first turn yet in the eyes of the game we for some reason have just been able to walk across the entire map in one turn anyway it's time for isabella cancellara to cancel this sectoid's existence no no she's not 
shot, she's going to hit the wall. 85% chance to hit. 85! How? Where do these numbers come from? I reckon people are just making them up. These numbers aren't real. I don't believe it. I absolutely refuse to believe that these numbers are real. Now, this has been one very effective little game, I must say. We've managed to neutralize a absolutely metric ton of aliens, and we're about to finish off even more. Come on, 85% chance to hit. That's absolutely perfect. Good job. We're now in probably the final round of the game. Uh, there is a sectoid literally here, and I'm going to execute the ultimate attack move known as surround it with three different people, all with an 85% chance to hit, and I swear to God if we don't kill it this turn, I am going to go insane. There is a 40% chance to crit it, and we haven't landed a single crit on it. Come on, shoot, come on. 85% chance to hit. That's much more like it. There we go, it's only got free health now. You've got this. Execute the reload. And now shoot. Come on. Oh, yes. Perfect. So now all we've got to do is plant that X4, and we've just completed the first mission of the game entirely in one turn. Ah. Oh. Perfect. We've taken a turn-based strategy game and effectively turned it into a time manipulation and overall OP strategy game. In fact, I don't even know if strategy exists anymore. Oh, look at this. We killed eight enemies. Turns taken nine. Very spicy. Are you sure about that game? Soldiers wounded zero. Soldiers killed zero. Rating flawless. Absolutely perfect. But what's so interesting is that basically, for some reason, the game simultaneously thinks we took nine turns and one turn. For example, the game goes, oh, average enemies killed per turn, eight. There were only actually eight enemies in the game, and if we were to kill eight of those over nine turns, we should have averaged 0 0.9 enemies killed per turn, roughly. Instead, we average eight for the sole reason that basically we did the entire thing in one turn. Also, well done to all of our agents, especially Agent Blank, who was under the most fire, because at the end of the day, no one in our entire team was even shot at. Don't you love it when you attack an enemy who just can't even fight back. That is quintessentially British, I might say. And it's, more importantly, perfectly balanced. This is what the power of Yorkshire tea gives you. Mmm. Ah. <sighs> It's so good. And it's not sponsoring us. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We've done it. We've started our glorious experience. And from here, we can now go about and do many different missions and attack many different aliens. Oh, and perfect. We've been given a new target, which is a Advent Commander. Basically, the game wants us to kill this person. It's apparently going to be easy, although easy on the hardest difficulty for actually anyone is actually going to be rather challenging. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of our entire squad here because they are all garbage and instead we're going to roll out a squad of complete and utter rookies. Now you might be wondering why I've chosen to keep the ranger. Well that's because the ranger is one of the worst people in the game, technically speaking, because they have a melee weapon. Now melee weapons normally in XCOM aren't the best because you'll run out into a position of no cover and get yourself shot at the following turn. However, as it's only ever going to be our turn, this is actually no problem whatsoever. Our ranger guy can simply run headfirst into the enemy and just immediately murder them with absolutely no fears of getting shot back. Now once again we're in a mission so we're just going to charge literally straight ahead into the enemy. Trust me it's a fantastic strategy. And of course once again we'll be using Frida to destroy absolute time and reality in this game. Thank you very much Frida. So whilst Frida's busy tearing a hole through space and reality itself we're going to be loading back into that mission and making it so that the AI is completely completely and utterly neutered. Now, of course, we're in a perfect situation where we can send our melee boy in to do some fighting. So melee boy is about to run just headfirst into an enemy unit and stab him. Go, 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 go. Oh, yes, melee boy. Perfectly balanced. Mostly because that guy doesn't actually get to fight back. So you'll notice commander guy here has just activated himself and all the other aliens. Now, of course, by activated, this means they can now technically fight back, although they're not going to. Now, one of the best things about this exploit is that you don't actually have to do this from the start of the game. You can do this as and whenever you like. Be it the final mission of the game when you're struggling, be it a very easy mission for just absolute memes and fun, you name it, you can choose to do this whenever you like. And once again, we're just going to keep doing these sweet, sweet melee slashes. Because I mean, it's better than actually using a gun. Guns suck. They're terrible. No one wants to use guns. Ah, oh, come on, Dominic Szymanski. It's time to slash. Slash, slash, slash. Do it. Come on. 
Oh, yes. Now, of course, XCOM isn't the only game that we can exploit. There are millions of games on this planet which we can, of course, find some very glorious little exploits for. And so if there's any particular game you 100% have to see an exploit for, then hey, give me a shout and I'll go give it a try. I mean, there are just so many fantastic gaming experiences on the market at the moment. Ah, and there we go. Another absolute flawless mission where we killed seven enemies and took no damage whatsoever. Lovely and simple and easy. Now, Naturally, we had an average enemies killed per turn of 8 because there were 8 enemies in the game. I have no idea how this works, but it's fine. And once again, no one in our entire squad was even remotely considered a getting shot at. Absolutely perfect and flawless. Now, most importantly, we can upgrade our sword boy to being blade master. This is fantastic, trust me. Because by being a blade master, all swords deal plus 2 extra attack, which is glorious and have plus 10 aim. He's basically more likely to hit. We can then kind of continue this down and down and down until we make him the greatest sword slashy boy in the entire known universe. Ah, oh, what a fantastic experience XCOM 2 is. It generally is good fun, I strongly recommend everyone gives it a try, as it is definitely one of the better XCOM games ever created. I mean, there are some XCOM games so bad we just don't talk of them. Oh my goodness, some really really bad ones out there. Now, one of the reasons why this build is so powerful is because if we manage to actually get one of our soldiers up to being a max level scout class, then effectively we completely balk the game. You see, over here we have our ranger, Corporal Dominique Slblblblblblesky. Now he has a lovely little blade on his back. But most importantly, it's his abilities which matter. You see, with Blade Master we do an extra two damage, and so on and so forth, your blade does slightly more damage. However, it's the final upgrade over at Colonel which is very overpowered. The reason why, quite simply, is because it gives you the Reaper ability, which is a devastating chain melee attack. Basically, the first melee attack you do cannot miss, and then each kill in Reaper mode following that grants an extra action point. This is where it becomes a bit interesting, because all it takes is one action point to actually move and hit someone with the sword, meaning you can effectively watch this character into the middle of a mission, deploy them, and then put them to Reaper mode, and then watch them take out the entire enemy in one turn. Now this is just one scout class. Imagine if you instead just had four of them. With four people in the scout class, you can take out entire missions almost instantaneously. You don't even have to tab out and reload the game because your dudes are just teleporting across the map with slashy blades. It is ridiculous. Ah, oh, that's why I quite like XCOM oh so very much. I also like it because, you know, it's it's got this lovely little thing here. Oh, just put that there. That's very nice of them. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Where's Denmark gone? <laughs> everyone always forgets Denmark. Actually, no, everyone always forgets New Zealand. How dare they put New Zealand in this game? Oh, and, oh yeah, they also, they also left this little guy in. That's good. That's very good. Anyway, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. I've had an absolutely fantastic time here today playing XCOM. If you have enjoyed what you've seen, today then hey feel free to give the video a like and if you want to see more videos where I play games in a way which it really should not be played then consider subscribing and joining our lovely community. Anyway I'll see each and every one of you in the next video and in the comment section and as always a massive thank you to each and every one of these majestic patrons on screen who make our lives oh so much more fantastic. Thank you very much you lovely people and if you're wondering what video to watch next bam you can pick this one on screen now and chosen by myself to be perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.